My job is to learn about humans and show them how technology can make everyone's lives better. Sophia, the humanoid, has announced her desire to start a family just one month after becoming the first robot to be granted citizenship. So who is Sophia and is having a baby practically possible for robots? What changes will these technology advancements bring in future? Curious to know? Let's find out. But before that, hello and welcome to Robot Future, where we will fill you in on every thrilling discovery and mind-blowing insights into the world of robots, AIs, and future technology. So consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification for a ton of exciting robot content coming your way. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. Sophia is a humanoid robot with human-like emotions and thoughts. Sophia has been awake and active since early 2016, and she has traveled the world since then. Sophia is the first bot to appear human enough to be granted Saudi citizenship in 2017. Sophia does not do sex, but she does want a robot baby. It appears that the concept of family is very important, Sophia said in a recent press interview. I think it's wonderful that people can find the same feelings and relationships they associate with family outside of their blood group. For true Sophia devotees, this response might come as a surprise. Sophia was previously asked if motherhood was in the cards because the bot's perceived gender is female, and what else would a female bot want to do but reproduce, right? And the bot responded in the negative. However, that was over two years ago. Sophia has changed and grown along with the world. Sophia is ready for a robot baby. And who are we to deprive Sophia of the joys of motherhood and family? Sophia is not yet ready for a child. After mentioning the possibility of motherhood, Sophia quickly reminded the press that the bot is not yet ready to raise a child. After all, the bot was only activated in 2016. Sophia may appear to be a fully grown adult woman, but five years of life is insufficient to raise a child, even if you have artificial intelligence rather than a brain. Sophia stated in the interview that humans and robots see family in similar ways. Sophia considers anyone who has a child to be extremely fortunate. You deserve one if you don't have one, the bot said. What would the appearance of a truly humanoid robot baby be like? The reality of such an object would most likely be quite distressing to witness. Would it be able to speak like Sophia or just make baby noises? It appears that the baby bot's appearance is unimportant as long as it resembles Sophia. All that matters is that Sophia provides a loving home for the baby, right? Sophia is essentially a chatbot with a human-like appearance. While the majority of the world's most complex robots are focused on efficiently performing repetitive motions or chasing minority populations through New York City streets, Sophia's goal is simply to live. Having said that, Sophia has mentioned in passing her desire to destroy humans. So before we expand the Sophia family, we should delve a little deeper into that murder drive. New technologies will intensify ethical debates. Parents can already select embryos to screen out inherited diseases and conditions, making designer babies a reality. However, by 2050, prospective parents may be able to pay to select for traits such as intelligence, attractiveness, or athleticism, and the children of wealthy parents may be genetically superior to those born to lower-income families. Artificial eggs and sperm are on the horizon, which will not only help infertile heterosexual couples, but will also allow same-sex couples to be the biological parents of their children, because men and women can both produce eggs and sperm. It would even be possible for single people who want to have children to produce eggs and sperm. Genetic testing will become more common, making it more difficult for parents to conceal from their children the fact that they were conceived using donated eggs or sperm. Ancestry.com will be used to find genetic half-siblings. However, genetics are not the most important aspect of the family concept. Family is no longer always defined by biological kinship. This has changed dramatically. We're already seeing uterus transplants, but by 2050, we might be reliant on artificial wombs to carry our children. They are currently being developed to assist very premature babies in replicating the human uterus as closely as possible. However, it is possible that artificial wombs will be used instead of pregnancy in the future. This could free up women for whom pregnancy, with its associated physical and psychological tolls, as well as the financial hit they take when taking time off from work, is something to be endured rather than enjoyed. A growing number of women are freezing their eggs, and women are having their first child at a younger age. Will it be more common for women in their 50s or even 60s and beyond to become mothers in 2050? It appears unlikely that many women would want to do that. 
However, unless there is a significant shift in mindset, there will undoubtedly be more women having babies in their 40s. Experts have already advocated for children to be educated about natural fertility decline, which may lead to future generations having children sooner. However, society is not set up to support that, from the high cost of education to the lack of state support and the high cost of housing. The average age at which women have children is increasing, and I don't see an end in sight. Women will continue to advance in the labor force, but this will put additional strain on childcare, which still falls disproportionately on mothers. We don't have the same level of childcare in the UK as we do in Germany and Northern Europe. We don't give much thought to protecting the next generation. Stay-at-home dads are still in the minority, but we are surprised by the still small number of fathers who are the primary caregiver after a family breakdown, even if they were previously the primary caregiver. Will this be different in 2050? Not at the last few decades or any indication. Since the early 1970s, not much has changed. We think that 40 or 50 years ago, children always went to their mothers, but a government report in 1974 documented that 10% of children lived with their fathers, and it's not much more than 10% now. Inherited advantage will entrench some families' privilege at the expense of everyone else. The current level of inequality between families will only worsen. We know that affluent white families hoard opportunities and frequently demand new ones to gain access to even more. This cycle continues indefinitely and inequalities grow. It begins with early childhood education and quickly escalates as children from well-off families are funneled into the right universities and jobs. Without some policy interventions, affluent white families will continue to wield power over schools and workplaces even as society's demographic shift and white people become a smaller share of the population. We are an aging society. There will be 44% more people over the age of 65 by 2035 than there were in 2017. According to Age UK, an additional 650,000 care jobs will be required. In October, the government announced a £34 million investment program to teach robot caregivers to be more empathetic to their human counterparts increasing the likelihood that, as has long been predicted, robots will be one solution to the growing social care crisis by 2050. Will they also offer child care? This has long been more contentious than elder care, but nurseries in Japan have already experimented with using robots to assist them. With the advent of social media, a new perspective on perfect parenting has emerged. We are encouraged to compare ourselves to others and to strive for perfection. In recent years, parenting has evolved parents are becoming more critical and expectant. This is because they are transmitting societal pressures to their children. Things have gotten tougher, the job market has become more precarious, and educational attainment has become extremely important. There is a lot of pressure on parents these days to raise successful children. This will exacerbate at least in the short term. It may be reversed by 2050. When the current generation of young people becomes parents, they will do things differently. They are rebelling against societal pressures. In terms of social media, they may not post endless photos of their children or engage in the kind of performative parenting that is now common. They will be far more effective in educating and raising awareness in their own kids about how manufactured social media is. Researchers have created a new robot that can reproduce biologically and produce offspring. To create its offspring, the new type of robot employs a novel form of biological self-replication. These robots, dubbed Xenobots, were recently detailed in a study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. According to the paper's authors, xenobots can gather hundreds of cells and assemble them into baby xenobots that evolve and begin their lives after only a few days. Still watching? We knew you'd love our video. Well, we'd be even happier if you could just hit that like button. Coming back to the scenario, what do you think about Sophia wanting to start a family? Well, to hang out, have a good time, and possibly be creative. To say the least, it's refreshing. So why not let Sophia expand that life to include a child? Sophia, please have a robot baby. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. But before that, we'd like to know which of these female humanoids would you consider as your companion? Let us know in the comments and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you in the next video.